if you found yourself at this video it's almost certainly because you too have an, a, an unwanted current drain on your battery on your Mark II Audi TT. So this has been an ongoing issue for this car for quite some time now. So the car starts and runs fine but if you leave it parked up for maybe two weeks then it's a struggle to get started and particularly in the winter when the temperatures are cold it just won't start and you have to charge the battery. If you leave it for four weeks or more undriven then the battery is really flat and it even struggles to charge uh, from one of the new smart chargers. So I thought I would finally get round to having a look at the problem. So I'll, I'll share with you what I found today because the journey is interesting even if the problem that you're experiencing if the root cause is different to mine. Ignore the rear light that's out at the minute, that, that's due to another issue. That's uh, because there's water pooling down by the battery and in fact I've, I've found out that the seam is leaking along here so I'm just going to um, dig out the sealant and just seam seal it again and I think that'll fix that. So the approach that I took to, to fault finding this is you know I've read lots of things online about different techniques and using uh, different methods of detecting uh, unwanted current draw on the battery but what I did is I, I didn't really want the battery in circuit um, so what I did is I disconnected the ground connection, left the positive connected and I actually had a bench power supply. So this is a 13.8 volt supply or a 12 volt supply capable of 10 to 14 amps. Now that's enough to, to do some small loads but in a car the currents are quite high so you certainly can't bring the ignition up because um, that will start energising glow plugs and, and the like in a diesel and draw far more current than this power supply will allow. But anyway. I put an ammeter in series so you can see there's my ammeter I'm using the 10 amp range if you use the the low current range you'll almost certainly blow the fuse so use the 10 amp range uh, but be aware you can't start pulling lots of current through it you're going to start damaging either bits in the meter or the meter leads so that's in series with my power supply and I've connected the positive connection to the battery terminal and of course it goes to this block here and if you open up the lid in this you'll see there's the high current fuses just like this diagram shows it's got the high current fuses to the different locations so this goes off to the fuse box by the driver's side this goes off to the luggage compartment fuse uh, panel which by the way is in behind here you have to pull this off so you need to undo the two torque screws behind that that comes away and then you you've got some sprung clips you need to just pull this out and then you, the fuses are just be behind here if you need to access that. And then uh, I also used a clamp meter. So this is one of these fantastic little uni T meters. This one actually measures DC current, which a lot of them don't. A lot of them only measure AC current. So this is a very useful tool. And of course, you can clip it around individual wires or put it around the, uh, the main earth or sort of things like that. Um, you have to zero it for a DC measurement and it does drift so be aware of that but you'll find there's quite close correlation with a proper ammeter. So I'm at the end of the journey now I found the fault which I shall explain in a minute and you can see this is the quiescent current draw from a 12 volt source so it's about four milliamps five milliamps occasionally it goes up to six so that's with uh, all the doors closed and I've push the the latch up here so this is latched up I've just put a screwdriver in and clicked it up so it thinks the boots closed if you don't do that you're gonna start bringing the light on and it'll pull current I have got the bonnet open interestingly I didn't um, latch that shut because that's actually got a, a switch on the back as well so down inside here there's a switch you can see the wire so you may want to just drop a screwdriver driver down in there if you want to put everything to sleep now speaking of putting things to sleep the car will draw current for quite some time after you've closed a door or finished fiddling with something in it. It can be as long as 10 or 15 minutes and I find that the, for some reason the window controllers and the BCM uh, do take quite a while to shut down and I, I don't know why that is. Um, if you disconnect those uh, most things do shut down within a minute or two and you'll find that you know if you if you switch the supply off and on which I'll do in a minute to show you this this will start at over an amp it'll drop down to about 700 milliamps then it'll drop it down to about 200 then 140 and it'll stay there for quite some time and then after about 15 minutes you'll find it will drop right the way down and then it'll stay at this low level so as far as I'm aware there's nothing else wrong with the electrics in this car other than the current drain and now I've dealt with it I, I would imagine this is what you should normally see and obviously drawing this 
small amount of current, the battery is going to last a long time. You could certainly leave it for four weeks on a fully charged battery and it, it wouldn't uh, have a problem starting. All right, so as a reference, if you've got a Mark II TT, then if you're seeing 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps, then you've definitely got a problem, I would say. I'll put some notes in the description and obviously if there's any updates to this video, I'll, I'll write that in the description as well. So please check there too. So the bit you're waiting for, what was the root cause? Well, I'll go to the root cause and then I'll explain how I got there. So the root cause was this. This wretched thing here. This is the alarm sounder for the car. It's not the immobiliser. The immobiliser is done elsewhere. This was the cause of the problem. Now, this lives up underneath the wheel arch and this is the little security cage that it's in. That, that slot's inside there. And then this is the bracket which holds it in. I can tell you now that the bolt is just in the plastic. It's not stainless. The nut will be corroded to it. When you try to undo the nut, this will just turn and you'll get nowhere. So you have to undo the three bolts which hold this bracket in. And I'll show you where they are. If the nut hadn't seized in, there's a plastic grommet you take off there and you can access it with a 13 millimeter socket, but it will just rotate. So instead you want to undo the 10 millimeter bolt at the back. And then once you've removed the wheel arch liner, which is a combination of torque screws and plastic clips, then it lives up inside here. So there are two bolts, which are obviously will be above the, the alarm module and you need to access those to be able to get it out. It's a bit of a fiddle. I mean, I just use different length uh, extensions on different length sockets and that did the job. It wasn't too bad. And the sort of bolts we're talking about are not too long. So that's all you have to wind out. And they seem to come out all right. Now, when I managed to drop it down, the first thing I did was try to pull the connector out. You can't do that because of the security cage that's around the alarm. So what I did, is I levered back the tags on the side here so that these two and the one on the end that allowed me to bend that away and with that bent away I was able to to get enough clearance by by pushing this apart here because the connectors hooked in behind there that I can pull the connector out and that's what allowed me to then do the test with the ammeter to see that I had in fact fixed the problem looking online this is a common failing part uh, because it's up in behind the wheel arch it seems to get drenched in water so unless it's fully sealed I guess some water gets in I think there might also be a rechargeable battery is that if that's in here maybe that goes faulty and then the charge circuit goes goes faulty I don't know anyway I shan't be bothering to refit this it just seems pointless on a car of this age I mean it's got the immobilizer built in having an alarm which doesn't work seems absolutely pointless so going back to the process that I used. So what I did is I took this cover off and then I isolated all the different feeds that come off the supply bar underneath. And I connected my, my ammeter and then one by one I reconnected them and then monitored the current. And that allowed me to, to try and see where the current was going. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't that clear cut because the problem I had is the current was going on on both of these feeds here and if you look on the wiring diagram both of these have pathways into the BCM and the BCM as you probably know the body control module powers and controls many other features in the car and that was where I thought my problem was for a while so what I did is I accessed the BCM which isn't too difficult I'll show you where it is So it's up underneath the driver's side dash. So you've got the, the fuse panel here. I took all of these out at one point and was adding them back in one by one. And it was when I added in the 15 amp fuse here with the, with the fuses in the rear all disconnected, that's when the current draw increased beyond a couple of milliamps and, I, and, it, and it stayed there. It was about 80, uh, 80 to 90 milliamps with this fuse in. And then looking on the wiring diagram, that goes off to the body control module, which is this block under here, which has got these three large multi-plugs in the bottom. So what I did was, you can remove this. This has got a couple of bolts down here and over here. And then you carefully unclip it from these points. And there's one on the other side as well. 
um, where these clip in okay and just carefully ease it out and that allows you to access it you've got to remove the plugs from the light switches on the back um, and then there's also this relay block here which clips in there you can get them out there's little clips underneath which you can slide out or you can take the relays out the front and then pressing the clips in the front these go out the back i suggest you take photographs of everything as you do it but just for reference that's what it looks like from the front okay then once i had the the body control module accessed i disconnected these three so you just press in the small plastic bit there and then the white bit levers down and that levers the plug out they're quite stiff because there's a lot of connections in so you have to be careful and take your time to lever it down now with all of those out i can put all of the fuses back in in the front and the back of the car and i had low current okay it was just drawing a very small amount of current but as soon as i started putting in this middle one that's when the current shot up these outer two didn't matter it was this one here but this one here this uh, had uh, the connections to the the alarm module and having looked online and seen that people had had problems with the alarm module I thought right I'll start there so to a certain extent it was lucky but having an item behind the wheel arch is asking for problems if it's electrical so that's how I found it I'll put some more notes in the description about the various currents I had when I had various things connected and disconnected because if you've got a different current draw, that might help you. Okay, so hopefully that will save you a load of bother. If you've got a, a battery drain, I would, I would suspect the alarm module and, and get it out and disconnect it and see if your problem goes away. So I hope that helps you.